Hey guys, we're going to do another update on Bitcoin today. It's been three weeks since the last video, so I thought it's, we're long due and we seem to see a bit of volatility coming back into the market. Big red candle today, as you can see. So lots to be discussed. And yeah, I hope you're all doing well. I'm myself, I'm a little bit unwell. You might be able to tell by my voice, a little bit croaky today. Apologies for that. But I did want to get this video out today just because of what we're seeing here. Um, so without further ado, I want to just address what we're seeing right here. Is it the end of this consolidation? I mean, I did speak about the potential finish of a bear flag three weeks ago, as you can see from my last YouTube video. Um, we have just kind of hovered around this region. If we zoom in, let's go on the four hourly, just look at this. You can see right at this point, there was a good three wavish move up, um, suggestive of a bear flag completion. Instead, you can see we never really went much higher than this point, but we consolidated for a good while before we eventually have seen this kind of sell off that we're seeing today. Okay, so it's a little bit more prolonged, which basically just suggests that the move down is going to be more exaggerated because obviously as per Charles Dow's cause and effect principles, the longer we consolidate for the longer or more aggressive we can expect the breakout to be. Okay, so in this video, I want to talk about why we saw this kind of prolonged consolidation and a lot of it is linked to the dollar. Okay, the dollar is the most important market to be following right now. The dollar index, okay, DXY. The reason being is the thing that markets are most sensitive to right, right now is inflation. Okay, inflation, which obviously affects interest rates and interest rates obviously have an effect on currencies. And it's the dollar that we're all interested in. It is the reserve currency after all. It basically, you know, the world revolves around the world currency the world reserve currency so the dollar is probably the most important chart to be aware of right now and we'll have a look at it in a moment to show how it just looks like it's continuing its upward trend which is essentially terrible news for anything priced in dollars and that includes all businesses whether it's commodities whether it's bitcoin whatever it is anything that deals with dollars it's bad news for because it's going to be hard for business within those sectors with less people people finding it harder to do business in those sectors because of the, the increasing value of the dollar. So in terms of this, what we've been looking at, first of all, let's just focus in on Bitcoin here. So we've got this kind of long consolidation that we've been watching. It's followed this shift pitchfork, which again supports the fact that it's more corrective price action. There was never anything impulsive about this to suggest we're going to start bottoming out at this point and start racing to new all-time highs. There's nothing to suggest that. These overlapping waves, as per anyone who follows Elliott Wave, you'll all know that these overlapping waves suggest a corrective price action. And the fact anyone who follows pitchforks will know that as, you, as long as you're following a shift pitchfork trajectory, then you're more likely following a shallow gradient corrective pattern also. And you can see how momentum was lost within this pitchfork. After completing a potential bear flag at this point here, we came into the upper median line. The next move up was quite shy of the upper median line and the following high was even further away from it. So it's a loss of momentum as we go along and there eventually you see your sell off beneath the lower median line. That is hugely concerning for me because it was the lower median line and upper median line here that were defining this corrective trend. So as far as I'm concerned, trend is broken. Okay, that correction is broke. Bear flag, in my opinion, is complete now. Obviously, there was I had speculation about that at this point here. We consolidated for longer, but it's the break of this lower median line that confirms the bear flag has been completed. Okay. Now, in terms of an Elliott wave point of view, it, it doesn't really matter. The microwave counts. It's clearly corrective. It's clearly broken out now, breaking the lower median line. But if you were to put a sequence on it, I'd be looking at perhaps a, a W up to here, then followed by an X then this is all looking like an ascending triangle to me. If we can just put the uh, the trend lines on that triangle, you know, you can see your higher lows coming in here and then you can see your, your ceiling point here. So I'd be, I'd be looking at that kind of sequence if you were to label it. It's not essential. You don't need to go into so much detail and depth with regards to Relic Wave, otherwise you'll drive yourself crazy and it's not gonna make you a better trader. So that's how I'm looking at it as a potential sequence for the Elliott Wave count. But as I say, it doesn't matter. It's corrective sequence broken out. That's all you need to know. Um, so this level also was a very key level. It was a, quite a reasonable level to use as resistance in and around 24K. There's a few reasons for that. So first of all, there were Camarilla pivots, best seen on the daily time frame. 
So let's take off the other annotations and just look at Camarilla pivots just for a moment. So very, very useful are these Camarilla pivots. The R3 in the previous month, so on the daily time frame, these periods represent a month. So you can see the previous month, the R3 was perfect resistance. Again, acted as resistance, as we can see here, for this month of August, once, twice, three times, four times, couldn't get above it. Now we're getting our sell-off, taking us through the S3 pretty cleanly. So pretty aggressive sell-off there on the camera of the pivots. But more importantly also is our um, simple moving averages. Uh, 200 week is the one that we need to focus on. That's the one that kind of acts as our high time frame bias. So obviously previous support, support, support. So everyone was very keen to see would it act as support once more. But we spent a lot of time beneath it. I think there was roughly seven close, closing candles beneath it. Then we've managed to slightly reclaim it. You can see last week, there was a good show of strength here. But now we're getting a bearish engulfing candle, which is a really bad, ominous sign for that candle. You can basically say that that candle is now obsolete. We are clearly still using this 200-week simple moving average as resistance. Obviously, it depends on if we close this week. It's a little bit premature to, for me to be speaking just yet because we've not closed this week. But as we stand, you know, any candle close beneath, let's say, um, 22.7K is a very concerning sign, in my opinion, for Bitcoin. And as I say, things are looking like they're going to break down further pretty fast. So, um, yeah, these are the kind of the high time frame things to be looking out for on Bitcoin. So mass, massive weakness coming in. Also, we've got a bigger pitch for to the downside. You can see the upper median line acting as good resistance here. The blue line of this downward sloping pitchfork. Let's take off that moving average now. Um, target being 13 and a half K. We've spoken about this level for a good amount of time now. Last two months ago, I think I did a YouTube video. It was labeled uh, what a recession means for Bitcoin. So check out that video where because it was it needed a video in itself to justify the reasons for this target. Um, there are potential, there's a range of prices that price can come down to on Bitcoin. You know, I'm prepared for it to potentially come down as far as 90% retracement all the way down to 7K. Certainly possible, but I see uh, a, lots of reasons for a potential bounce at around 39.5K and the, the size of that bounce will have to be determined later, but I would certainly want to see how price reacts in and around that level rather than hold on to any short through that point. So as I say, there could be a considerable bounce around that point. Um, yeah, so as I said, the dollar is the one to watch. As I said, inflation, uh, interest rates, these are all the things that are driving market sentiment right now, determining whether you know we are going to head into a recession or not. You know, this is what the markets are most sensitive to. This is what investors are really, really watching, monitoring. So any word from the Fed. Um, is very important. So obviously we had a bit of a catalyst yesterday with our Fed minutes come out and obviously they're speaking of further inflation hikes. Okay, so it's just kind of adding to what we already expected but now we hear it kind of in concrete that drives more sentiment uh, to a, a rising dollar, you know, in keeping with expected rising interest rates which is obviously is bad for um, anything priced in dollars, including Bitcoin. So now we're seeing a sell-off in Bitcoin and you'll see it in the US indices as well, which we'll take a look at in a moment. But on the dollar, just to quickly bring that up. So the DXY chart, you can see this really aggressive upward trend. Okay, now this is this pitchfork I've drawn. It's not a regular pitchfork. You can see the first pivot it looks like it's in the middle of nowhere. I'll have to, I'm going to be doing a tutorial on pitchforks. Don't worry, this will be coming out on YouTube soon. Uh, but um, I'll explain how this is drawn, but essentially you can see the lines respecting um, the price action being respected by the lines very, very nicely. Uh, upper warning line already tested. Now we've had a little bit of a breather here. So let's go on the daily. Let's go on the daily to see a bit more of this price action because we were on the weekly right there. So you can see we had a cool off over the last month. This cooling off on the dollar allowed for that kind of relief rally on Bitcoin and US indices. They took full advantage of the dollar cooling off and Bitcoin, US indices, well, all, or crypto in general, all had that relief rally to the upside. However, that seems to be finished now because the dollar is back to its upward trend, okay? What did it test? It came down, came into prior resist, um, resistance, used it as support, and now we're off again. And yeah, I can see us at least until the end of the year, pushing up higher into this trend uh, probably retesting this upper warning line once more, 
But um, yeah, I just wanted to demonstrate that that downward trend. You can see quite clearly now. Let's zoom in on it, just to see how you know very clearly downward trend was here. Very nice breakout of all of breaking out quite cleanly there. You can see an aggressive candle today. And what's more, we take we are taken above this upper medium line also. So a very key level within the pitchfork. So usually you'd expect a little bit of resistance there. You added as a resistance here. Next time we tested temporary resistance, paused under it. Now we break through. So now we're seeing the dollar breaking through, racing higher. We can expect stocks and crypto to start selling off. And so with that, I do want to address what we're seeing on US indices. So let me just find those charts very quickly for you. So we will start with the NASDAQ. So NASDAQ. So very interestingly, all the key US indices, NASDAQ, S&P 500, Dow, they're all coming into very key FIB levels. So from the top to the bottom of this big sell off, we've come into the 50% here on the NASDAQ. Okay, so we've gone into the 50%. You can see the big pitchfork to the downside. It's an original pitchfork, upper warning line getting tested to the T. Also, the shift pitchfork holding the move to the upside, upper warning line slightly overshot here. But you can see the confluence. Very nice confluence between Elliott Wave and Pitchforks. So upper warning lines of the two Pitchforks, 50% Fib. And um, yeah, so very, very nice confluence, setting up a move down as the dollar seems to be continuing its trend to the upside. So that's the NASDAQ. Then let's take a look at the, oh, sorry, you probably wanna know what this massive Pitchfork is in case you're new to the channel. So this massive Pitchfork has held the trend in the NASDAQ since the financial crisis okay so post 2008 this move all the way up here pretty nicely a few blips outside the lower warning line here and here but otherwise very nice test of the upper warning line that's where we were oversold and had our sell-off and lo so losing this lower warning line would be really really concerning for stocks because we're losing that trend that has been holding the um, post financial crisis trend for all this time so that'd be very concerning to see that break but I am anticipating that move, but obviously we're still yet to see confirmation of it. Uh, so that's NASDAQ. Let's pull up S&P 500. So here again, just want to demonstrate the FIB that we've tested. High to low, where have we come into? The 0.618. And you can see again on the S&P, we're seeing that weakness. A little, well, not too much weakness just yet. We need more confirmation, but very key resistance level as the dollar starts to trend higher and furthermore you can see it on the dow jones again that 0.618 level from high to low the fib and the 0.618 level coming in at this point so again we're at key fibs on all the major us indices okay so this is the point i want to make we're coming into resistance on the us indices i must admit you'd want to see more of a, a bit of a downward move for confirmation that we're seeing true resistance at this point but the fact that the dollar is starting to race higher once more gives me concerns that you know stocks are likely to sell off once more and uh, we're probably going to see crypto do the same uh it is worth bringing up the 200 uh day simple moving average was it 200 day no it's a 200 week okay 200 week simple moving average is always very key so let's uh there it is on the Dow. So it's just about it adds the support here and here. And we just held above it here. Okay, this was where the rally came. But now let's see what's going to happen here. You know, are we going to come back down and then break through this 200? That would be a very concerning sign for stocks indeed. So we'll have to wait and see how things play out. But there's a very important catalyst coming up next week uh, for spreading from Thursday through to Saturday next week. That's from the 25th through to the 27th. And that's the Jackson Hole Symposium. This is where all the central banks come together and discuss monetary policy. So you're going to get a lot of information there about expectations for interest rates, which, as I say, is the key thing that um, the markets are most sensitive to right now. So um, obviously um, that will be a huge catalyst. So that could really spark you know, a move in either, either direction. As I say, I think the move is going to be down, but I think it's going to add a lot of fuel to the fire. So keep an eye on these dates, especially post um, the week following this uh, close on uh, August 27th. So very key. So once a year kind of meeting that they have between the central banks. OK, so keep an eye out for that one. It's fast approaching. Um, so, yeah, that pretty much wraps up everything I wanted to say 
on crypto and US indices with regards to the dollar also. Uh, if you are interested in joining the group, I cover these charts in depth um, every week, every Thursday. Uh, so this is my, you can find the, in the in this video description, you'll find a link or you can just go to wave618.com. You can see my products here. Basically, this is cryptology. This is the, um, the kind of weekly videos that I do. All details are described within here. You just need to click for the information. Uh, and it basically includes my educational courses, which you can see on either side here. They're all wrapped up into this bundle. So um, yeah, if you are interested, then do check that one out. All right, guys, I think we're going to wrap up this video now. Let's see how the week plays out. All right, take care.